forward over time. Oh, gee, baby. You're Gosh. too fast. Every time I'm like, I'm going to do it today. And then oh, I'm like, it's over it. my head. You want to do it? Go on. Oh, gee. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm psyched. I got to practice. I'll get better. That I'll get was better. worth coming to work for today. Ashley, right there. <laughs> Next time, uh, I'm going to blow you away. So, I'm mind blown. So, uh, Chris, you're with us for the first time today, and I was flabbergasted by, show him your bows. Whoa. Yeah. Yes. He was coming in Dropping to do bows some on serious him. networking on Outnumbered and had to put on some patches. That's mm -hmm. a real lumberjack right there. It is. It's hard to replace these jackets. A lot of lumberjacks and blazers. <laughs> in D.C., that's the closest we get to Lumberjack. With a little flannel That's on why the no one should ever live there. <laughs> the best way to hide at a Trump rally, when they would come in for the press on the campaign trail, I would just run into the bathroom and take off my tie and, like, put my jacket around my shirt. Everyone else was getting rounded up. Tucker Carlson, they would always catch him in a second because oh, he's, like, a foot taller than anyone. Oh, don't take advice from him. <laughs> no. He's a mess. <laughs> what? He's a mess? I'm he's got his shirts King. custom made in Maine. Wow, oh, fancy. Yeah. that's a lovely state. That's a lot to know. I just know. like to rag on I'm him a fan. whenever I can. I'm a Maine fan. It's beautiful. And the lobster. Ah. So, Chris, so can we talk about this wonderful, beautiful, huge book he wrote? The Art of the Donald. Mm -hmm. comes Are out you a Donald Trump 10th. fan? I am someone who definitely appreciates where he's, what he's done. Now, this is a guy who was underestimated in New York by the local politicians, by Mayor mm -hmm. Koch. He was derided. Koch actually thought he was more popular than Trump, and it turned out to not be true. <laughs> and then he was, he was dismissed early, even before that, by businessmen who said, all right, this guy talks a good game, but he's just, he's just from the outer boroughs. What's he going to do? And then he was dismissed by uh, pretty much all national pundits. Mm -hmm. I thought that he was just trying to make some money at first. Uh, and then he was dismissed by Republican governors, Republican senators. And he may and have he been, wants. by the way. He may have been, and then it took on a whole thing of its own that he didn't plan on. Right. Well, he absolutely, he's gotten, I think, further than he might have expected. Cause this is a guy who doesn't have any noticeable talent in singing or acting, although he's done some acting. <laughs> uh, Home Alone was a great yeah, cameo. Right. Uh, and he's become the most famous person on the planet, which is what he set out to do. So this, I wrote a book, The Art of the Donald, which is 30 lessons you can take from Trump's life, uh, coming out on October 10th. And it's things, it's the lessons that you wouldn't quite expect. It's not the average self-help book, and it's mixing with a lot of humor and making fun of reporters. Can you give us one example? Ooh. How about the first one? First one. Oh, geez, I, I can't even recall the first one. Just the first one, one is don't underestimate somebody. Uh, Donald Trump, okay, here's a fun one that I kind of wrap up the book with, is some lifestyle ideas. Uh, how to dress for success. How to dress like a man. Donald Trump is someone who always has had his style. People have tried to dismiss him as being this Wall Street guy who's just trying to imitate from that movie, uh, Wall Street, get that Gordon Gecko look. But if you look back before that movie, he's always dressed like that. And the reason why he was able to walk into a diner in New Hampshire or walk into a gymnasium in Iowa and get along with people who had a Vietnam hat, Vietnam yep. jacket, jeans and boots on in that fancy suit, in that red hat, is because the way he dresses, he's actually comfortable. He's comfortable mm, with who he is. Good point. He's not some, taking some focus group thing like, all right, I'm button one I'm button. going to wear a cardigan now. Yeah. Or a work. sweater vest. I love Rick Santorum. People wear this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> or talk see, with that's, a certain That's what's accent. so interesting is because um, throughout the entire presidential campaign, people would deride him for being a billionaire and snooty, but he was he was more capable than any other candidate of going into these places and these states and, and county fairs, and people were so excited to meet him and connected with him. Does that ring to his authenticity? Absolutely. Like, so on the New Hampshire, on the New Hampshire campaign trail on the day of the primary, we, I got in there early for a front row seat for Fox and Friends in the booth there, and everyone was gathered in and snow gear is pretty cold, and Jeb Bush was alone at the counter, looking like a sad painting, <laughs> and he left after his interview through the back door, and then Chris <laughs> Christie came in. Was he low energy? He was very low energy right oh, there, and I'll tell you, yeah. I felt bad for the guy. And then Chris Christie came in through the side, and then he left through the side as well right after his interview, and he's supposed to be the man of the people there. And then Donald Trump came in, and by the time he sat down with Tucker and Ducey, he knew the names of the cooks. He was ordering from the back, being like, who are you voting oh, for? Wow. And then an hour and a half later, the place was still under Secret Service protection because he hadn't left. He and his wife were like eating a carb he heavy uh, pancake platter. Melania was there. Wait, she what did you Wait, wait, wait. What did you was she wearing? Mrs. Trump eating carbs. She was at the table with them. Okay. <laughs> but what <laughs> shoes was she wearing? Huh. She is perfect. More importantly. I can't recall. <laughs>
Um, that was a joke. Secret Service wouldn't let me near it. Didn't get it. No, but those are all. I didn't hear. Just, oh, I said what, their, what shoes was she wearing? Oh my goodness. Adding to the authenticity was something even Hillary Clinton complimented him for in one of the debates. When asked to note something positive about her opponent, she noted his family mm -hmm. and his interaction with his family seems to be yeah. very genuine. And he's a father and a grandfather and. I'm sure you probably wrote that in the book, too. Yeah, because people derided him, and they said that, you know, maybe he's got the modern American family. He's got two ex-wives, a car and wife, kids from all these different wives. He's also got something that is really noticeable. Now, amongst the super rich in fancy cities like New York City, there's a problem where if you, even with normal American families, at least one child, somebody somewhere in the family, you're going to have some issues at some point. Donald Trump's got a whole family, all of his kids, they all get along, they all obviously love him, mm. they, they can all be trusted to run his business, so he's, he's done something right. And even his ex-wives seem to be getting along with him better than some people's <laughs> actual Nobody husbands Nobody ever wives. mentions the word that people have said so much about him and that we hear him say a lot, and that's the word love. Like maybe that's just yeah. Me. Even when he talks about the dreamers, maybe that's just it. Maybe maybe it's that simple, right? Okay, I, I want to ask you something because this is a theme throughout his books. Never admit when you're wrong. Is that part of the art of the Donald? Absolutely. I think he learned that a little bit from Roger Stone, or at least it was cultivated in Roy Cohn, the old lawyer for McCarthy, who he met in New York City. Even when you're wrong, it doesn't necessarily do right to tell your enemies that you know that that they're Very right. Very specifically in Art of the Deal, he said, "Never say you're sorry." And never apologize. I mean, they'll use it to hurt you, and he knew that. Remember, Mitt Romney wrote a book called No Apologies, and then the yeah. entire campaign trail, he apologized <laughs> for being wealthy, being successful, right. having a beautiful family. That's why family. people didn't well, like him. He went after the yeah. president as a candidate, and then after that, apologized. Oh, yeah. Well, he, he apologizes <laughs> all the frogs, time. frogs, legs, and marshmallows. <laughs> right. That'll uh, do it. The Art of the Donald is the book, and uh, no doubt you have seen kind of behind the scenes a little bit. We saw something on Outnumbered last week with the president and the first lady on the ground for the second time, third time, excuse me, because he did two trips to Texas after Harvey, and then he was on the ground for Irma last week. We covered it live here. What have you witnessed about this president behind the scenes that maybe you could share? Because I, I, it was interesting to see them come in. They paid for the food for that particular stop there for Irma victims? I think to your point, he walks in a room and he knows, he gets to know everybody in the room, the names of the cook, the names of the people serving the food, and that says a lot. But don't all politicians kind of do that? Not, no, they actually don't, and, and I will not name names, but on the outnumbered couch, uh, quite a few of the Wait, presidential, just us here. But, but quite a few of the presidential <laughs> candidates oh. uh, were, oh, were guests okay. on the show, no, and there were, there were uh, vast let's differences. Let's not name any names right now. No, we're not going to name names, but there were vast differences in comportment. Yeah. The way they held themselves, the way like they talked to their the staff, uh, the way they engaged during commercial oh, breaks, yeah, the little things about big. people that That's give you glimpses yeah. into their, their true character. By the way, we only have two minutes left, and topic number two was to ask Miss Kennedy about your big event this weekend. Uh, I, oh, it's on, by the way, it's on the live chat. Like oh, people are, Kevin Dubuque what? is saying congratulations Please on tell the us. Oh, thank you. I did, uh, I did a half Ironman, which... It was People a who race. Moment. It's it's <laughs> it's a seventy point three. That means it's it's seventy miles. There's a two thousand meter swim, a fifty six mile bike, and a thirteen point one mile Ooh. run at the end. And uh, I've been racing triathlon for twenty two years. And it's and no matter what race you do, every race presents its own challenges, and you really have to overcome something. And last week, Sandra told me, <laughs> don't let your mind out your body. And I always internalize a mantra uh, when I'm racing because oftentimes, and I've read this from professional athletes that sometimes you have to go minute by minute in order to sustain your pace in order to get to the finish line because there's so much self-doubt and I was I was at the the starting line with all these people athletes of different ages and backgrounds and training levels there was a little bit of self-doubt in everyone no matter how much you yeah. trained and, and Sandra was a division one athlete at LSU <laughs> and still hold the steeplechase record but you even said that that you had to go through every race the night before oh, yeah. because so much can seep in mentally and it takes something special to carry you through even for us civilians yeah don't. so is it easier or harder than an hour on outnumbered <laughs> overall <laughs> i was just thinking about that last yoga class i took i was like i'm not gonna I let just my think, mind doubt my body it's interesting whatever. because after after four hours in the race then you start a two-hour run oh, and that's when you God. really have to tap into something different you have to trust your training you have to so make sure you, you get the right today uh my quads are a little bit fatigued but i'm not really sore so I was really happy. I, wow. I foam rolled that and stretched like last night. Super wow. shaped. I, I, I turned to get 45 for a, a week and a half ago. No. And, and wow.
Wow. So, but as oh, you happy, as you happy. get into your 40s and 50s, you have to train differently. Oh, you have to train smarter. You have to be happy really belated. diligent. Thank you with your nutrition and stretching and everything else. And so, so that was your routine Congrats. for the show today. Thank you. I, you I, foam I, rolled. You. <laughs> You're a Virgo, then, huh? That's right. Yeah. Reporters and editors are always going on hikes in the weekend. It's like, yeah. why would you climb a mountain on the weekend? <laughs> no way. It's the best. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Bye bye. <laughs>